You can be a lot of things, but one thing that you shouldn't be is that guy who just tosses wards around without any thought. Just because you placed wards doesn't mean that your wards are effective. So let's drop one here and see what we can do about it. Hey summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Irene and today we'll be discussing the best warding locations that are used by pro players. Everyone has different latent skills, so people rank up for different reasons. One player might hit gold off their mechanics alone, one player might hit gold because of their positioning, or maybe they made it because they have huge macro brain strategies. Past gold though, you start needing a more diverse skill set, and map awareness is an essential piece of that. But you can't have good map awareness without seeing the map, and that requires good vision. And for that, you need the right wards. But before we get into it, our question of the day is, which ward location saves your life the most? The ward that saved my life the most is one that when you go from the dragon pit, you go up and then you make a left in the river towards the pixel brush. Then you go straight up from the pixel brush and you ward over that wall. If you're blue side, this is a very helpful ward to see mid laners roam. It's also really helpful to see if the enemy jungle comes by that path. And that's one of the two ways that they usually come to the bottom side. And the bottom lane will usually cover their opening or at least the dragon pit. So having this one, this entrance to the river really does help and kind of round out your vision game. Now with that said, let's jump into the video. So why is map awareness so important? Well, the obvious answer is if you see someone coming for you, you'll have time to back off and not do that pesky dying thing. The more in-depth answer is that if your map awareness improves, so does your decision making. Knowing where the enemy is dictates when high elo players choose their aggressive moments and their defensive ones. It's how they choose when to engage, how to control their wave, and where to rotate. So many aspects of League come from map awareness alone, and these wards will help take you to that next level. Our first ward is one of my favorites, and it's placed between the enemy Gromp and blue buff, and it's so that you can see both of these objectives. This ward is most valuable at the beginning of the game and during the laning phase, because these are two high experience camps that you wanna spot the jungler doing, and if they aren't doing them, you wanna give your jungler the opportunity to see that. The ideal time to place this ward is shortly after you see the enemy jungler on the opposite side of the map. So if he's ganking top lane or if he's ganking bottom lane, you know it's safe on your side of the map and you won't have that awkward, oh, hi, buddy, what are you doing at your blue and gromp moment when you walk into the jungle and you didn't see him on the opposite side. And this piece of advice holds true for actually any deep ward that you wanna place. So keep that in mind, clear the wave, push your lane in, then run straight there and drop a ward right after you saw the enemy on the opposite side. But aside from early jungler detection to keep you safe in the lane, knowing the jungler's blue buff and gromp are up can let you make aggressive plays on them too. If their jungle started the blue side, you can assume that their blue will be back up around six minutes and 45 seconds, since that buff takes about five minutes to respawn. So keep that in mind when you place this ward. You wanna place it around six minutes or six minutes and 15 seconds. So get ready, set the ward down, ping your allies, push your waves in, and go hunt that jungler down when they show up. Now it is he who shall be ganked in his own lane. Our second ward goes at the lip of the enemy wolf pit that's closest to mid lane, and it's the counterpart to the previous one. This is because while the previous ward lets you see if the jungler enters through the jungle path, the way this ward is set up, you can see if the jungler enters from mid lane and you can see if their wolves are up. So if you're paying attention to both these wards, you've got your bases covered for the blue side surveillance. And the only way that they can surprise you is by walking through a lane to gank or enter the river through walking through lane. The caveat with deep vision is that you have to know how long of a grace period you have before the jungler arrives. You can't just see the jungler heading to their wolves and peace out like a frightened rabbit. You'll miss out on gold and fall behind if you play that defensively. Now a general rule of thumb for the early game is that it takes most junglers 12 to 15 seconds to clear a camp. So if you see them beginning a camp, start that timer in your head and react accordingly. Whether that be pulling the trigger on an engage before the jungler can arrive, or shoving your wave so that you can recall and waste their time. And just like the previous ward, this one is most valuable in the laning phase, and you should only look to place it when you know that there won't be anyone lurking there to give you the big dead. Ward number three is placed in the mid lane after you've taken the tier one mid tower. Put this bad boy down a little outside of their tier two turret vision so that you can see the mid lane space between the two jungle entrances. This ward may seem like a really odd place to place vision down because it's right in the middle of the lane and minions walk through there anyway and they can provide you with vision every so often, but you need to have eyes there at all times, not just sometimes. Being able to see this part of the map means that you can see when the enemy team is rotating for neutral objectives like the Dragon and Baron. If you know they're coming ahead of time, you can set up a death bush or sneak a different objective on the other side of the map. 
Either way, it's a valuable ward that gives you some of the most important intel in the game. And I highly recommend you place this ward, as well as potentially a ward earlier in the game before you take the tier one turret, right outside of their tier one vision, if you're up against a heavy roaming champion. So up against something like an Aurelian Soul, a Talon, or even a Twisted Fate, you want to see when they leave the lane and give your team that heads up because we know not everybody listens to MIA pings, but they may actually spot that little token on the mini map going off to the side towards their lane. Ward number four is placed in the bush that curves around in front of Red Buff. Not the one attached to the Red Buff wall, but the one at the angle between Red Buff and Krugs. This is the red side equivalent of the Gromp and Blue Buff Ward, and it gives you some advance notice if the jungler's headed your way or if it's ambush or clock. The important thing about this ward is that you have to place it on the very edge of the bush in order to see the red buff. Otherwise, you'll just be able to see the jungler walk to it. That's still fine info, but if you're already dropping the ward, you may as well drop it a few pixels further so that you can see the red buff's health bar and maybe even go for a steal. This particular ward is better as a control ward because most junglers don't actually path directly through this bush, so ideally, you won't have to replace it every few minutes. Now, the same rule for deep wards still applies. Push your lane, then go for it, but only if you know for sure that the jungler won't be there or the mid laner is not gonna be faster on the rotation and collapse. So just like before, where we had the red buff ward as the red side equivalent of the blue gromp ward, Dropping a ward in the raptor bush is the red side equivalent of the wolf ward. This too offers early detection of the enemy jungler in lane phase and gives you all the notice you need to stay safe in the laning phase. When paired with the red buff ward, you're theoretically untouchable as long as you're paying attention. Now, usually mid laners are at the highest immediate risk when a jungler is doing inner camps like wolves or raptors. So when you see them starting an inner camp on one side of the map, hover on the opposite side of your lane so you can maximize distance between you and them if they go for a gank. Now, like I said, the key to deep wards is keeping your eyes peeled and always having a plan of immediate action ready to go. Our sixth ward and our first shallow ward are the control wards placed at your own jungle entrances from the river. Now, all wards are defensive in a way, but these wards are when you're taking more of a passive role in the game. They protect you and your team from the enemy jungle invading you. So if your jungler isn't as strong of a skirmisher early on as the enemies, you'll want to set these wards up to help them defend their home. These two are best as control wards because they're on your side of the map. So they shouldn't be under as much risk of being destroyed. And more than that though, because they require an extra hit and therefore extra time to destroy, they can bait advantageous fights for your team if everyone rotates and collapses on them. Now, these ones are basically just the opposites of the last wards. You wanna control enemy jungle entrances when you're looking to make aggressive moves, or if you just wanna have a closer eye on the enemy jungler. They'll reveal the jungler when they're coming in for a gank angle, and you can respond accordingly, or you might catch them on their way to Dragon or Herald. From there, you can ping your team to collapse and follow up to smash them. Your jungler likes these control wards though, because they make sure that any counter jungling will go undetected, which can be vital in creating leads. Pixel Brush is our eighth ward recommendation and it functions as a nice way to keep your mid laner safe from ganks on their side. If you're not familiar with the term pixel brush, it's the small bush in the river on either side of mid. There's honestly nothing fancy here. You probably already know the ward here, but these wards are preferable when it's not safe to get anything deeper in the jungle and you can't afford to go blind. And since they're right there next to the lane, they're pretty convenient to place. So any time between waves is fine as long as you know the coast is clear. They're not a perfect defense by any means, but there's something at least. Keep in mind that your mid can't always ward both sides on their own. So if you're doing well with lane pressure and you can spare the ward, roam over and toss a ward into whichever side your mid is blind on. And they'll thank you for it. I mean, well, they might not thank you for it because it's League and people can be really rude, but you're being helpful and you wanna be a good person, right? Go be a good person, go ward, please. This is another simple one, but warding the river bushes adjacent to bot and top lane are standard practice for a reason. It's an easy ward to place, it's reliable, and depending on the enemy jungle and your wave control, it can be all that you need. Now, like I said, it's nothing new or spectacular, but if you're not able to get a deep ward, just place one in the river bush and try to freeze your wave near your tower. Now, you might not be able to see the enemy jungler coming from 12 miles away, but you won't really need to. If you're freezing successfully, river bush is all you need to survive. And the other pro tip here is don't just place it at the tip of the bush. Take that extra step or two if you don't think the jungler is on that side and place it further down. And ideally, it's not even in the bush. It's maybe a step or two further than that and towards the Drake or towards the Herald. You're gonna have way more coverage there. And this is if you're not freezing and you wanna play and push a little bit more aggressively. But if you are on the back foot and you have no idea where the jungler is, just get that shallow ward down. 
All right, all right. So this wart is very situational and you're gonna have to feel it out game by game as to whether or not it's gonna be worth it. But placing a control ward in the alcove can save you from some repeat ganks. I say it's case by case because abusing alcoves is something only certain players have taken to. So doing it every game will often be wasted vision. And if you're against a champion with a big gap closer like Zack or Fiddlesticks, keeping a control ward tucked away back there is a good way to keep yourself on the safe side. That way you don't have to keep stepping up and face checking bushes to get back there. One misstep is all it can take to ruin a laning phase. So it's better safe than sorry if you think there's any alcove gamers. Now, obviously you can drop a ward anywhere on the rift. These are just some of the more influential spots as a more general piece of advice. But don't just drop wards around mindlessly. You wanna ask yourself where the next play is happening or what angle you're vulnerable from. And finally, try to check choke points when you can rather than just some random alleyway in the jungle. It's better to only see them for a bit but have vision from multiple entrances than it is to place your wards somewhere you'll see them for a while but only if they take a certain route. Keep your vision up, look at the minimap every three seconds, and you'll see some fast improvements in your early game KDAs. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for informational content aimed at taking your game to that next level. Drop a like or comment and make sure to subscribe to stay updated with our content as well. And until next time, go get that LP.